So let's continue with the bit manipulation playlist. And before that, hey, everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is single number two. Uh, the single number one has been solved in the previous video. Go back and watch it. So what is the problem exactly stating? It is stating that you will be given a nums array where every number will be appearing thrice. Yes, every number will be appearing thrice except for one number. So if you carefully observe, five is appearing thrice, four is appearing thrice, and there is this number which is appearing once. So you'll have to return me this particular number that appears once. Again, uh, it will not be in clusters. It might not be in clusters. If you see over here, all the fives are in cluster, all the four uh, are in cluster. That might not be the case. You can be given any particular order. So if this problem comes up in an interview, what is the extreme naive solution that you can think of? The first one that I can think of is, let's take a map data structure where we will be storing the number and the frequency. So let's start with five, okay? So the map will be storing five comma one. If five is the number, one is the frequency. I'll go ahead, five is the number, the frequency increases to two. Again, I'll go ahead to the next, 5 is the number, the frequency increases to 3. I'll go to the next, 2 is the number, 2 comma 1. I'll go to the next, 4 is the number, 4 comma 1. I'll go to the next, 4 is the number, 4 comma 2. I'll go to the next, 4 is the number, 4 comma 3. Once this is done, what I can do is, I can traverse in the map. And when I'm traversing in the map, 5, my bad, 5 is appearing for 3 times. So this is not my number. 2 is appearing for once. This is my number. So I'll straight away return. Got it? So I have to write down the code. It's going to be very simple. I'll be defining a map where it is integer, comma, integer. Why integer? Because the number will always be in this particular range. So integer, comma, integer. After that, what you can do is you can start traversing from 0 to n minus 1. That is in the nums array. And then going forward, you can say map of nums of i plus plus, and then you can terminate the for loop. Once that is done, you have to traverse in the map. Again, depending on the language you use, uh, you can traverse in the map accordingly. So you can take an iterator and you can go through the map and you can just check for the value or the second in C++. If that's equal to equal to one, this is your number, which is it dot first or it dot key, whatever it is, according to your language. So what will be the time complexity? Again, let's assume that the map is taking logarithmic of size of map, where the size of map is M. Let's assume that. So can I say this particular for loop will be taking B go of n into logarithmic of m where m is the size of map because i'm writing it into the map again we can use a map uh, an unordered map in c plus plus that will be taking b go of one probably in java as well but yeah let's not get into the time complexity of map you can figure that out yourself because i've done it in the hashing lecture go back and watch it so over here i'm again traversing in the map which is b go of m so can i say the overall time complexity is b go of m rather b go of n into logarithmic of m plus b go of m agreed and the overall space complexity is b go of m now what is the value of m can i say that the value of m is every element is appearing thrice so i'll be storing n by three elements near about plus one element that's appearing once if you carefully observe they're storing three elements and over here in total, we have seven elements. So it is basically seven by three plus one. Seven by three is two plus one, that's three elements. Got it? Because every element is appearing thrice. So you won't be storing three occurrences of five. You'll just be storing one occurrence. And there is one element which is appearing once. So the value of M is, so the value of M is this one. So you can just replace it and you'll get the exact time complexity. Obviously, the interviewer will not be happy with this one and he'll ask you to optimize it. So we will be optimizing the brute force. 
Now over here, I'll be using the bitwise operators. It's very simple. If I have to write five in terms of bitwise, it's one, zero, one, like in binary, right? Again, if I take this five, in binary, it is one, zero, one. Again, if I take this five, in binary, it is one, zero, one. If I take this two, in binary, it is zero, one, zero. Two in binary is one, zero, right? If I take four, it is one, zero, zero. If I again take four, it is one, zero, zero. If I again take four, it is one, zero, zero. Let us observe something. This is the zeroth bit. This is the first bit. This is the second bit, right? And the zeroth bit, because of five, we have three ones. Because of five, we have three ones. Perfect. In the first bit, because of five, it is not set. So there are no ones. If you carefully see, there are no ones. There is only one one. There is only one one. And that is because of two. Because it is appearing ones. Okay. Let's look at the second bit. We have three ones and we have three ones. So you have six ones, which is a multiple of three, which is a multiple of three. Why? Because five is appearing thrice. Four is appearing thrice. Got it? We might, like, we, we could have had something like, uh, let's assume, six. If this was six, if this was six, in that case, it would, have, it would have been one, one, zero, right? If it was six, in that scenario, the second bit, the second bit would have been seven times, which is one more than a multiple of six. One more than a multiple of six. So can I say, can I say, Let's assume, let's take the number as 6 for an example, for a better understanding. I'll be taking it as 6 now, okay? So, let's erase it. Let's take it as 6. So, if I take it as 6, can I say what I can do is, I can go over the 0th bit. I can go over the 0th bit and I can figure out how many 1s are there. And I'll find 3 1s. So, this bit will not be set in my original number. This bit will not be set in my number which appears once. Okay, fine. Let's go to the first bit. And we are seeing that there is one, one, which is not a multiple of three, which is not a multiple of three. Thereby, the first bit is set. Thereby, in my number, the first bit will be set. Okay, let's go to the next one, which is two. If I carefully look at it, we have seven ones, which is not a multiple of six. Thereby, the second bit will also be set in my number that appears once. Agreed? So, this is my number. Very, very simple. I have to count for every bit position, right? And how many bit position will be there? If the numbers are integers, we know there will be 31 bit positions. We just need to count them. And that is it. 0 to 31, I mean 32 bit position, 0 to 31. And we are done. So it's time to write down the code. So what I will do is, I'll take an answer variable, which will be my number, which is occurring once. After that, I'll go through every bit. So maybe I can say bit index equal to 0 till 31 bits. Because in integer, we will have 31 bits. So I can go through each of them. After that, what I can do is, what I need to do is basically, I have to take the zeroth bit and I'll have to take every number, which is basically take the first number, then the second number, then the third, and then go ahead and eventually count how many bits are set, how many bits are set. So that's what I will do. I'll take a count equal to zero and I will be iterating on it. So I equal to zero till n minus one because that is the number of elements in the nums array. And I'll say, I need to check in the number nums of i is the bit index bit set, is the zeroth bit set, is the first bit set, is the second bit set, as I keep moving. So I'll be like, nums of i and one left shift of bit index. You've already done it, how to check if the ith bit is set or not. If this is non-zero, then I know that this bit is set. So once I've iterated over the entire array and I've counted how many times is that bit index set, I can simply say if count 
modulo 3 is equal to equal to 1 which means there is one element which is appearing once this bit index is set over there so what I'll say is okay answer because it is initially 0 0 0 I'll have to set that bit because in that number that bit is set I'll be like answer or one left shift of i that is how you set the i -th. not i exactly it's going to be bit index that is how you set the i -th bit in a number once this is done you can close the f you can close the for and at the end you can return the answer so what will be the time complexity again the pseudo code you can find the c plus plus java python javascript codes uh, below so what will be the time complexity can i say this is b go of 32 i can this is for sure b go of 32 and this is b go of n so the overall time complexity will be b go of n cross 32 and it will always be this in all the cases the best average and the worst possible scenario and what is the space complexity that's a big of one because it's just using a variable in order to generate that number again the interviewer will not be happy with this i'll ask you to optimize it so in order to optimize what i will be doing is i'll be sorting down all the elements so if i sort down all the elements i'll get something as one 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 two 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 really a three and a four and a four and a four i know one thing that our answer is 3. I can see that with the naked eye. But how can I compute it? So after sorting, I'll take the advantage of one thing that is all the groups with 3 elements are together till a point where the single element breaks in and then again it is together. So there will be a point till which they are together, the groups are together and then someone comes in between, right? So I'll take that advantage. So what I'll do is, I'll start with the first index element. I'll start with the first index element, not the zeroth index. So once I'm standing here, if this particular group is having all the three elements together, can I say this and this will be same? It will be. So I'll check for one before and I'll see both of them are same. Thereby, okay, fine. I still haven't got my number. And then I'll take this and I'll move three places. So that's basically one, two, three. So I'll move it here. Three places ahead, right? Again stand. Again I know that this is a consecutive group. So thereby the previous element which is i minus one, if this is ith index, i minus one, and this one is same. Okay. Again move it three times. This time I'm standing at four. Someone got into it. Someone got in between. If someone got in between, the cluster or the group is no more there. Like, it is there, but you're not traversing the middle element anymore. And that is only possible if the previous element and this is not same. Why? Because the single element came in between. Thereby, if the ith and the ith minus 1 are not same, in that scenario, the i minus 1 will be your answer. Yes. And you might be thinking, okay, hey, Strava, there might be corner cases. Yeah, there will be. So what will be the corner cases? Let's uh, think of it. Will there be actually corner cases? Let's think of it. So now you have to think about corner cases. And I'm saying that there is someone who is breaking it in between. What if there is someone right at the front? What if you have something like two, three, three, three after sorting? In that case, you'll start off with the first index element and it will not match. So the algorithm still works. Okay, what are the other corner cases? I know it can be in between and we have solved it. Even if it is at the first, the, the algorithm still works. What if it is something like this, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4 and 5. Let's see how it works. We start off with this. This and this is matching. So it goes 1 place, 2 place, 3 place. This and this is matching, so it again goes one place, two place, three place, which is over. So in case you don't find a mismatch, then the last element will always be your answer because it is given and that there is always one element. There is always one element. So very simple. So what I do is, first step is 
sort it whatever array or nums is given to you you can straight away sort that down once you have sorted it what is your next step i'll start with i equal to 1 and i'll go on till the size of the nums and then i'll keep on shifting it by three places because i'll have to go to every middle element and i know one thing if at any moment nums of i is not equal to your nums of i minus 1 that means we're done and dusted we have got our element which is nums of i minus 1 in case this return statement is never executed i know that the last element is your answer which is nums of n minus 1 very simple what is the time complexity can i say i'm sorting it so that's n log n and this is n by 3 so the overall time complexity is n log n plus n by 3 and the overall space complexity is big of 1 but the only disadvantage is but the only disadvantage is we are distorting the given input right so you might be thinking hey how is this particular solution better than the previous one so the previous one which was the bitwise it was taking n cross 32 no matter what always into 32 over here in order to get n cross 32 log has to go till 32 which means the array size has to be 2 to the power 32 near about that yeah it has to be that that's that's not going to happen that is why and also if you are if you are given smaller arrays then this log will be extremely small whereas the bitwise was always taking n cross 32 no matter what was the size of the array that is why this one is a better solution than the previous one got it so it is time to uh, discuss the last solution now just a disclaimer the last solution is something that you should be knowing beforehand you cannot uh, discover and or you cannot produce it in an interview you should be knowing it beforehand so in case uh, you think that how can i think of such solutions do not worry no one can you should be knowing it beforehand i'll be using the concept of buckets it's very very simple it's based on bits and the bits will be taking care of everything technically you just think about uh, one or two numbers and then the solution is expanded to bigger set of numbers because the bits will be taking care of it so first of all forget about the array let's take a very simple array which is having two 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 okay i'm saying okay let's let's think what we need we need the number that appears once so i'll create two buckets which is ones twos and threes three buckets not two and under ones i'll be storing all the numbers like all the numbers i'll do some bitwise i'll be storing all the numbers yeah as the name recommends which is appearing once under twos i'll be storing all the numbers which is appearing twice under threes i'll be storing all the numbers that is appearing thrice okay so as of now i know what are the buckets storing now what is the next job so when i'll start traversing i'll have to figure out where will this two go from the naked eye i know that this two will end up at once right but programmatically i don't know where will it go out of these three so i'll have to figure out a way can i say one thing this two or this nums of i will go to ones if not in twos can i say this if it is not in twos it will go into ones it cannot be in threes for sure it cannot be because the number at max will appear for thrice so if it is in three it cannot appear four times right so i know one thing number of i will go to ones if it is not in twos okay can i say nums of i will go to twos if it is in ones if it is in ones very important 
If it is in ones, it will get into two. Perfect. Can I say nouns of I will go to threes if it is in twos? Can I say this? If it is in twos, then only it will go to threes. Right? Right? Very simple. So I've written down all the three conditions. I'll have to convert this into bitwise. Then this will start working. It's very simple. What you do is, you take this two. Now you start thinking of an operation that will add, sorry, that will add and that will delete. Because that is what you need to do. That is what you need to do. It will go to ones if it is not in twos. Go to ones means add. It will go to twos if it is in ones. It will go to twos means we'll be adding to twos and it will be deleting in ones. Perfect. After this, nouns of I will go to threes. It means add if it is in twos. That means delete from twos. Do we need, do we need to go to threes? There is no significance of threes. If you carefully see, I decide if it goes to ones on the basis of twos. I decide if it goes to twos on the basis of ones. Beyond it, I don't need threes. I don't need to store it for the third variable. I'll come to this. But as of now, just keep it in mind. Three will not be needed. Anyways, let's get started. We have the first element two. Okay. So the first element two has to go to this ones. What are the operators you know of? Let's write it. You know something as and? You know something as or? You know something as zor? So you have an and operator, right? You have an and operator. Zero and two. That's gonna be zero. So for adding, I'm very sure I cannot use it. For adding, I'm very sure I cannot use it, okay? Can I use a zor operator? Sorry, an or operator. I can. For adding, I can use an or operator. Can I use a zor operator? Let's see. Zero, zor two. I can also use a zor operator. So either of these two operators, I will be using to perform the addition operation. Okay, fine, fine. But what is the next thing? If it is not in twos, if it is not in twos. So I'll be using maybe let's say nums of i, zor, I will explain why zor. I'll come to that intuition. Nums of i, zor, once, if it is not in twos. If it is not in twos. So how do you write if not in twos? That's very important. So you say not in twos, right? So if twos is zero, assume if twos is zero, and uh, you kind of do a negation, like a not operator of it everything will turn out to be zero. Sorry, everything will turn out to be ones. If all of them are zeros, they will turn out to be one, 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 right? If you apply a not operator. And then if you do a and, what will happen is, it will get into ones. So what happens is, two, zor of ones, which is zero, and of not of two, which is technically all ones. So this is two. This is two. I'll explain, I'll explain. Stay with me. So once is two, once is two. So the first step is very, very clear, which is once zor, I'll explain why zor, nums of i, and then and of negation of twos. Why negation of twos? It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be in twos. Then only I can add it in once. Imagine if it was in twos. Imagine if the two was in twos. So what is two in binary? One, zero. So when you take a negation, it turns to be zero one and imagine sorry my bad imagine this one is once is zero number is two so what will happen is if it was in twos it should go to threes so and of when you do a negation this is zero one and this is two which is one zero one zero and of zero one is actually zero so you technically don't push it into one because you know it's already in two so it's the third occurrence it's a third occurrence we'll come to it we'll come to it don't worry we'll come to it as I go to the third frequency, you'll understand this. 
So can I say the first statement is very, very clear, which is once Zor of nums of i and of negation of twos, it shouldn't be in twos. Okay, addition is clear. Now your question, why not or? Let's come to the next one. And this is two. If I use the or, if I use the or, two or two will be two. It never gets deleted. It never gets deleted. That's why I cannot use the or. So thereby the or goes out of question. I can use or. I can use or. So let's use Zor. So can I say, I'll again apply the same formula, which says, okay, once, which is technically two, Zor two, and I'm saying it's not in twos. So since it is not in twos, I'll get those two, two bits as reversed. Like the bits in two will not be set. Sorry, will be set, will be set because I'm doing a negation, right? So two Zor two will be zero. And of that, those bit will be set, but this is and, and this is zero. So it'll eventually get zero. So it is deleted from once. Remember this, it is deleted from once. So I'm actually deleting it from once. Perfect. At this point, since it is no more in ones, it has to go into twos. So what is the statement for twos? If it is not in ones, if it is not in ones, let me write it. If it is not in ones, then I put it, I add it to twos. I say twos and num sorry, not and I'll have to add it, which is or nums of i. And with this complement, I'm checking if it is still there in ones, if it is still there in ones, you don't deserve to come to two because it shouldn't be there in ones now since I've deleted it. That's why this comes in. Very simple. So what will happen is two is zero. This and this will have all the bits set. So two and two will be giving you two. So it goes to two. It goes to two. Let's again do it for the next set. Then you'll understand it completely. But this time, when I come to this particular two, what will happen is I will try to make it go over here. I'll try to make it go over here, which is zero or two, which is zero or two, which will give me two. But this complement because the twos is already holding a two. All the bits are set. So when I do a negation, all the bits in that particular bit index of two are reversed. And when I do an and, it turns out to be zero. So eventually you take it out of twos. But do you need to store in the threes? Why do I need to store it into the threes? I don't need to remember who appears threes. All I care is who appears once. Fine, done. Let's go to the next. I have a one. I have a one. Let's go to the next. I have a one. Okay. Let's again do the same thing. Once is zero. This and the negation, it is not there. So it'll turn out to be one. Perfect. So if I try to go get into the twos now, if I try to get into the twos, see what will happen. Twos is zero. One. Complement of ones. Complement of ones. What is the one storing? One. So if I try to get into the twos, it will say all the bits are unset at the bit index of one. Thereby the and will give you zero. So it will never, never, ever go to twos. Stay at once. And after this, the traversal is completed. And eventually you will find your element at once and you can straight away return it. So it is, so it is time to write down the code. It's going to be very, very simple. Two liner. So what I'll do is, uh, I'll take ones to be zero. I'll take twos to be zero. And I'll start traversing from i equal to zero to n minus one. What I'll do is I'll say, okay, hey, ones, add it to yourself only if it is not in twos. And I'll do the same thing, hey, twos, only add it to yourself because the Zor will make sure it adds it only if you are not in ones. Because if you are in ones, stay at ones. Because when the first two comes in, it will go to ones. Twos, not twos. It won't get into twos. None understood. And at the end of the day, you can return the ones. As I said, this is the most unintuitive solution. If this comes up in an interview, uh, and if you haven't seen the solution beforehand, it's going to be practically impossible to figure out that solution at that moment. And uh, the interviewer usually is okay with it as long as you're saying the previous three approaches, remember this. If I talk about the time complexity, 
it's a bigo of n and the space complexity is a bigo of one and this is the most optimal solution now you might be thinking hey what if uh, we have a lot of numbers and they are not arranged in order because the example we took they were arranged now this is where the beauty of bits come in because everything happens in the bit level it doesn't happen in the number level it happens at the bit level so the bit when you apply or when you apply and automatically takes care of those bit indexes of those bit indexes so this was the concept of buckets you don't have to think so much you think of a smaller solution and eventually you can spread it to a bigger one because bit indexes will take care of those bit positions got this so this will be your most optimal solution so if you are still now watching i hope you have understood everything all the four approaches and if that is the case please please do consider giving us a like and if you are new to our channel do consider subscribing to us as well with this i'll be uh, wrapping up this video let's meet in some other video till then bye bye take care